bodies were so important. The rotation and orbit of all that makes up our universe serves as a clock to map changes and transitions. This helped the ancients understand that the change of the heavenly bodies were a mirror to the changes of all existence. December 21st, 2012 is simply a natural transition from one form of energy to the next, the transcendental evolution of man. This date is what's known as zero point. Our sun, as well as our planet Earth, is losing its magnetic field as the Earth is slowing in its rotation. All the while, its base resonant frequency, also known as the Schumann cavity resonance, is increasing in accordance with the predictable sequence of the Fibonacci theory. At a cellular level, our bodies respond to an electromagnetic pulse. The ancients called this the sacred circuit. The cells receive this pulse from the brain, which receives its pulse from the heart, which receives its pulse from the Earth. This pulse comes from the solar system, which from there comes from the galaxy, which ultimately comes from our entire universe. We literally share a pulse with all of existence. Yet another example of everything being one. For as long as scientists have been recording the Earth's pulse, it has remained at approximately 7.8 cycles per second. This was a constant fixed number until 1986 into 1987. It rapidly began increasing to about 9 cycles per second in 1996. So in one decade, it increased by about 2 cycles per second. By 2012, this pulse will be right around 13 cycles per second, just as the Fibonacci theory indicates. What does this mean for humanity? Just as cymatics has shown that higher frequencies result in more complex patterns, we are now experiencing the beginning of a major shift in both physical and spiritual vibration. It's difficult to understand what exactly will happen to our physical bodies, but ancient scriptures, pagan and monotheistic religions, mystery schools, and secret fraternal orders have all given indications as to what this experience will be like. This will be the shift of the ages, the transcendental period of monumental changes to humanity. Those unprepared for this transition will likely not be able to cope with the rapid changes in the psyche. The only way to prepare for what is to come is what we have sought after for our entire lives. Truth. Not the truth about governments, commerce, religions, terrorism, or anything external, but the truth within ourselves, within our psyche and our shadow self. Especially in Western cultures, we are taught that being normal means only being happy and never sad, only loving and never angry, only forgiving and never jealous. This sounds plausible, but it is not. We are not meant to repress any negative emotions because it causes imbalance. To conquer our emotions, we must embrace them, not fight them. We must acknowledge them and allow them to serve their purpose as we learn from them. The ancient Essene culture left teachings dating back about 6,000 years. They taught that our relationships with one another, with the universe, and with situations and events are mirrors of the parts of our psyche that need to be cleansed. Author Greg Braden beautifully explains this entire segment at great length in his work. His hard work and understanding of these subjects contributed largely to the marriage between science and spirituality. It is very important to understand that when you fear loss, fear death, fear war, fear terrorism, or fear change, you are giving others the ability to control you based on those fears. When you fight against poverty or against racism, when you fight for relationships or for freedom, you are outwardly attempting to repress that which has been placed before you to conquer inwardly. These situations are mirrors of our fears. This is why it is important to love and only love. Love those who stand with you, but especially those who stand against you. Don't look at your fears as a threat. Rather understand that this material world is only a physical manifestation of either the love or fear in your consciousness. It's as plain as day. All you need to conquer in your life is in your face. If you want to understand what your true inner fears are, analyze your ambitions and your inhibitions. Everything explained here about the esoteric agenda of the elite few at the very top is nothing to fear. 
They have been at work for thousands of years behind the scenes to manipulate humanity. And it has worked. Until now. It's very easy for any system of thought, religious or otherwise, that comes along, it's very easy to play on that, to play on our insecurities, to assure us all is well, we'll all be taken care of. We lap that up. So don't blame religion. Blame our own insecurities, which has allowed religion to flourish, and which has allowed so many systems of thought that are disempowering to flourish throughout human history. That's why we can't get out of it. Ron Sakely, Department Chairman, Chemistry, University of California, Berkeley, showed that DNA acts as an antenna for cellular upregulation. The primary function they taught us about what DNA is about. It's a receiver and transmitter of photons, light and phonon sound. For what? Cellular upregulation, meaning that the water molecules, the pyramid power around the DNA spiral energizing strands are taking in the spiritual energy of love vibrations and then sending it out for manifesting, precipitating in a quantum field the physical matter of the body. These are hertz frequencies or cycles per second that the musicians can retune their instruments to play and experiment with. Why? Again, these are the creator's musical scale, the original solfeggio, buried for 3,000 years in the Bible. So the ancient priests who knew how to levitate the huge stones for the building of the pyramids and the Masonic knowledge that predated ancient Egypt the ability to have this information, these frequencies, serve the function of creation, destruction, and miracles on behalf of the empowered people who had access to this knowledge. I say that because of this metaphor. This is the difference between the power of our Creator and anything else particularly evil. That you can go into a pitch black room full of evil, full of darkness, and light a little candle, and instantly that darkness flees. But you can't do the opposite. You can't go into a well-lit room full of truth and wisdom and righteousness and joy and health and harmony with the universal power. You can't take a, any amount of darkness and go into that well-lit room and have any effect whatsoever. That is the metaphor which I frequently think of when I think that I'm not empowered. It is the greatest lesson for me and I think for everybody else to know that we're on the winning side and that we win in the end. As you are watching this, understand that it is not a fight to be fought. It is not a war to be waged. No gun rights have to be exercised. Not a finger has to be lifted. Most people wonder how one person can make a difference. They ask that if all this is so simple and this information is available, why hasn't someone else conquered their fears and changed the world for everyone else? This is the most difficult and beautiful conundrum to our lives. Your reality affects you and only you. Your curiosity has led you to this genre of information to serve a very specific purpose in your life. To understand visually how the universe is truly a hologram, a math professor at Yale University developed the formula that is plugged into a computer program. Named after him, the Mandelbrot set shows a seemingly disorganized pattern. But no matter how far you zoom into the design, you will always find the same pattern within the whole pattern. Each fractal, broken down infinitely, will always reflect the whole. When one fractal changes its pattern, the sum total of the whole pattern changes along with it. This exemplifies that the whole world does not need to be awoken. There is no race to inform the six billion people on this planet of this message. It is only important that you, personally, learn to conquer your innermost fears and learn to love. When you see your fears for what they are and master your emotions, then, and only then, will you truly be free.